In this lecture, we'll be discussing another solved problem on first come first served scheduling. So this is the second problem that we are discussing on the FCFS scheduling algorithm. All right, so let's see what is the problem and let's see how we can solve it. So here is the problem. The arrival times and burst times of a set of six processes are given in the table below. So we have a table here where the arrival times and burst times for a set of six processes are given. So the processes are denoted with process IDs P1 to P6. So here is the question. If FCFS scheduling algorithm is followed and there is one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes, find the efficiency of the algorithm. So it says here that for this set of six processes, when they arrive at this times and when they have this unit of burst times, and if they are following a first come first serve scheduling algorithm and there is one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes we have to find the efficiency of this algorithm all right so before we go into that let us try to understand what does this term mean there is one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes so we already know how fcfs scheduling algorithm works the process that comes first will be served first or given the cpu first that's what we mean now by this one unit of overhead in scheduling processes, what we mean is that when a process arrives in the ready queue and is to be given the CPU, the CPU cannot be given just at that particular instant. That means exactly at that time, the CPU cannot be given to the process. The system has a delay, a slight delay of one unit before it assigns the CPU to each processes. So whenever a process arrives, the system will have one unit delay in assigning the CPU to the process. And even when the CPU is switched between processes, there will be one unit of time delay in switching the CPU between the two processes. So one unit of time delay will be there. So that is what we mean by one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes. So if it is like this, then what will be the efficiency of this particular algorithm for this particular set of processes if they arrive at this particular set of times and if they have this particular set of burst times. Let us try to find that out. So first of all what we are going to do is we have to draw the GAN chart for this. So let us see how we can form the GAN chart for this set of processes following this method. So coming to the solution we are going to form the GAN chart and this is how the GAN chart for this set of processes will look like. So let me explain this GAN chart to you. It looks a bit different from the previous GAN chart that we have formed in the previous solved example that we discussed in the previous lecture. And why is that? That is because we are having this del in this GAN chart. And what is this del? This del denotes the unit overhead in scheduling the processes. Because in the equation we said that there is one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes. So that one unit of delay is denoted by this del over here in this GAN chart. Alright, so let's see how we have formed this GAN chart over here. So we see that processes P1 to P6, they arrived at this units of time. So P1 arrived at 0 unit of time, P2 at 1, P3 at 2, P4 at 3, P5 at 4 and P6 at 5. So the arrival times are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and these are the burst times. So which is the first process that arrived? It is P1. It arrived at the 0th unit of time. So here we are following FCFS scheduling algorithm, which is first come, first served. So P1 should be the one that should be served first or given the CPU first. So here at the 0th unit of time, P1 arrives. But as we know that there is one unit of overhead in scheduling, as I told you, the CPU cannot be assigned directly at that time itself, but there will be a slight delay of one unit of time. So even though P1 arrived at 0 unit of time, there is a delay of one unit of time. So that is why we have shown this del over here. So from 0 to 1, that means for one unit of time, this del is shown and exactly at time 1, P1 will get the CPU for its execution. So after this delay of one unit, P1 gets the CPU for its execution. Now how long will P1 use the CPU? The burst time. We have to check the burst time for P1. What is it? It is three units of time. So P1 will use the CPU for 3 units of time. So 1 plus 3 gives us 4. So the completion time of P1 is 4 units of time. Now again if we look at the table here, we see that P2 arrives at 1, the time 1. So P2 should be the next one. So if you observe this table, 
it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So obviously the order of arrival is P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. So it is easy to remember for this example. So P2 is the next one that should get the CPU. But as we know that there is one unit of overhead in scheduling the processes, Again, after P1 releases the CPU, before P2 gets the CPU, there will be one unit delay. So, 4 to 5, there is less delay over here. Now, at the fifth unit of time, P2 will get the CPU. And how long will P2 execute? It will execute for 2 units of time. So, from 5 to 7, 5 plus 2 is 7. So, P2 executes for 2 units of time and the completion time is 7. Now again, the next process is P3, but P3 will have to wait for one unit of time. So again, 7 to 8 is the delay. And then at the 8th unit of time, P3 gets the CPU and executes for one unit of time. So 8 plus 1 is 9. So P3 executes for one unit of time. And again, before P4 gets the CPU, there is a delay of one unit of time. So 9 plus 1 is 10. So there is this delay here. And when P4 gets a CPU, it has to execute for 4 units of time. So 10 plus 4 is 14. So P4 executes for 4 units of time, hence the completion time is 14. Then again, before P5 gets the CPU, we have to wait for 1 unit of time. So it comes from 14 to 15. And P5 executes for 5 units of time. So from 15 to 20. 15 plus 5 is 20. So P5 uses a CPU up to the 20th time and then again there is a delay of one unit of time so 20 plus 1 21 and then lastly P6 gets a CPU and it has to use a CPU for two units of time. So at the 21th unit of time P6 got the CPU and it executes for two units of time so 21 plus 2 is 23. So this is how we form the Gantt chart for this set of six processes when there is a unit overhead in scheduling the processes and when they arrive at this particular times with this particular burst times. So if we see the entire time it took for these six processes to complete execution was 23 units of time. All right, so we have this information with us and with this let us try to calculate the efficiency of this algorithm and let's see how we can do that. So to find the efficiency of this algorithm, there are certain values that we need to first calculate and let's see what they are. So the first one is the useless time or the wasted time. So we see that this del which was the overhead in scheduling the processes is the time that is wasted. That time was not being utilized by any of the processes and it is the useless time or the wasted time. So how much time did we waste? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 6 units of del over here and we already said that the overhead is for one unit of time so all this del represents one unit of time so six dels into one unit of time hence we have six units of time that is wasted or which was useless and then next we have the total time the total time that was taken for this entire processes to complete their execution so if you look at the gun chart it is 23 the last process p6 completed its execution at the 23rd unit of time so the total time is 23 units and then we have the useful time so from these two values we can calculate the useful time so what is a useful time the useful time will be the total time minus the useless or the wasted time so the useful time will be 23 units which is the total time taken by these processes to complete their executions minus the useless time or the wasted time which is six units of time so that gives us 17 units so the useful time is 17 units all right so from this now let us calculate the efficiency so the efficiency will be calculated like this useful time divided by the total time the useful time that was spent divided by the total time that was taken so what is the useful time it is 17 units and what is the total time that was taken it is 23 units so if we divide 17 by 23 we get 0 0.7391 and if we convert it to percentage it is 73.91 percent so this is the efficiency of this algorithm for this particular set of processes when they arrived at the particular given arrival times with the given burst times and when there is a overhead of one unit of time in scheduling the processes and when they follow the first come first served scheduling algorithm. So that is how you calculate the efficiency of a particular algorithm depending upon the type of processes and depending upon the delays that is given. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.